Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, this is actually a very special occasion for us. This is the first time we will be presenting the OWASP Corasa project. Um, also, the project has been there for more than uh, three years. Um, we are finally releasing really stable versions of the project with uh, great uh, users and companies uh, making good use of it. So we're going to, to take you uh, in a journey through the story of, of web application firewalls and how uh, we came to uh, the new generation of web application firewalls that I require by the current market. So my name is Juan Pablo Toso. Uh, I'm from Chile. Uh, I am the author and co-leader of Corasa. Um, I will work in uh, cybersecurity for, I have been working on it for 10 years. Um, right now I work at Traceable and I, uh, I dedicate my career to API security. And uh, I'm this guy, Felipe Cipitria. I'm the CRS, Core Rule Set co-leader. Uh, Corasa co-leader also, which is a good synergy for us. And a uh, long-time supporter of many OWASP projects and chapter leader back in my home country in Uruguay. So uh, maybe most of us remember the 90s uh, uh, World, World Wide Web. Uh, we have fancy cursors with background music. Uh, Mark is everywhere. Um, well, uh, not even servers are rendering like static HTML with some, some CG, uh, CGI's receiving forms. Um, so, uh, in the, when the internet was dissolved, uh, we were looking for vulnerabilities that will actually really affect users and companies like cross scripting, SQL injection, and many vulnerabilities that have changed or mutated in time in terms of risk and uh, what can happen to you as a victim of the attack. Uh, also, well, we had HTTP 0.9, which only supported the GET method and uh, wasn't fine enough to the complex attacks like today. Uh, about the the first WAF, the first WAF attempt was a, a company called a APP Shield in 1999. Uh, they tried to create the first uh, the first web application firewall that will actually read the HTML and the HTTP request and response. The concept is very similar to what we see today. Uh, basically, they will have sets of rules that uh, uh, applies policies to the, the content that is received by the server and set, sent by the server. And in 2002, we have uh, the first version of mod security. Uh, I, I guess we most of us know, know mod security. It's like the world's most renowned uh, web application firewall that works, works as a... Um, um, as a web server, web application firewall, and right now as a library. Um, then uh, it's super important that we have a, a great game changer that was the OWASP top 10 that generated the, the standard of what will have to be protected by the WAF because it created the first concern of what should be uh, protected by the, uh, what are the vulnerabilities that we should be taking care of in the WAF. So uh, in 2005, we get the WAFEC, which is the Web Application Firewall Evaluation Criteria, which was a document created, uh, co-joined by the by OWASP and the Web Application Security Consortium, the WASC. And uh, it's a standard to define what, what a WAF should do, what should be, how do we evaluate WAFs, what are the concerns that we need to have on, the, on, on, on them, and how are they are supposed to do the things. Um, it's, uh, that's a, that's a version 1.0 of the document. There is a version two on the making, but it's been since some time, I think, without leader or without, uh, too much engagement on the, but I think that, uh, we are going to expose some of the things that, uh, we were talking on the, on the new and the evolution of the WAFs that might be affecting by, by the WAF. And in 10, 10, uh, 2013, we have the the version of the public core rule set, which is my uh, my other project, and it was released uh, in GitHub for public consumption. The idea was um, it comes out from it, it used to be a commercial rule set, but then it was uh, free at some point. Uh, 
we we know that it was around in the public SVN, but we there, there is it was lost in translation somehow, and there is no older version that we can find out. So 2013 is the is the day that we are looking at for the public CRS uh, availability. <laughs> Mall security. So as we said, Mall security was the first uh, open source uh, WAF. Uh, we are talking loosely about the term WAF here. It was basically a, a module, an Apache module. That's why the mod underscore security. Uh, this version um, rely heavily on Apache for working. So it was basically uh, dependent on the life cycle of hooks in Apache. Uh, basically, that was the main capability we defined in Apache like five different phases, which are the phases that are really we are using up to now for blocking. So we rely on, on the phase one for headers, first phase two for body, three and four for the response. And it was clearly uh, the place where the hook was uh, made in Apache for, for being called as a module. So that was uh, basically setting the, the standard at the moment then and we are still using that thing. Uh, the other thing that arise with with the module was a way of configuring it. So we we have um, basically configurational directives for the engine itself. So we we are telling more security behave like this, do this, uh, use these limits for things. Files are this big or not. And then there is a rule engine for actually writing rules for blocking or allowing traffic, right? And this was very dependent on the on the Apache language itself, and that that's why the seclang or something know what the seclang was born at the date, right? Uh, the the thing that we have with more security right now is that is actually reaching end of life in 2024. So for us that we use uh, open source software uh, since a long time, this is a critical moment that we are reaching. So implementation uh, techniques in the early uh, uh, 2000 years um, were basically um, in line or out, out of band where we will have uh, a reverse proxy, a transparent proxy. Uh, we will embed the web application firewall as part of the uh, um, web server. Or we had the alternative that was the mo most common uh, at the time that was uh, traffic mirroring. Well, as I said, uh the core rule set. Uh, well, the, with the creation of the engine, the idea is like, basically, uh, you have the way th to express uh, your security policies in a way that, that will affect the traffic that is uh, getting into your applications. So with the idea that we can execute uh, these rules, there was an idea to, can we do a common rule set that we can use to protect any application in a way? So. The Curacao was born initially inside, uh, we said Trustworth, but it was a Spider Labs. <laughs> the, the first, um, basically the, the, the Curacao set. And at some point it was by, wisely handed to the community for it, it, its maintenance. So the, the company, uh, moved the, the, basically the core rules set to, to our WASP at the point. Um. Well, now we'll go through what will be the beginning of the web, web 2.0. Um, so it all starts with rich content application. Also in the early 2000s, we still had rich content application and chat applications and other kind of rich context. Uh, for the case of applications in general, uh, something changed. Uh, new um, frameworks, uh, for example, ASP.NET will provide you with the uh, XML um, um, X ActiveX. You will install it and you will get ha hacked, but still. Um, then we came with JSON or RPC or JSON RPC, other standards that will enrich the application with what, what will be eventually become uh, the API calls. This created a, a huge um, change that has, hasn't been properly addressed until now by the existing web application firewalls. 
uh, the APIs and uh, JavaScript frameworks has changed how we interact with the web application. Instead of server-side server rendering, uh, our JavaScript code is calling the data directly from the server. We have multiple data structures that we can consume, like GraphQL, or we can use uh, RESTful APIs and JSON or XML. Um, and some of the logic, business logic, has been transferred to the client, which isn't okay. I mean, uh, maybe there should be two, two copies, the server and client, but uh, it created a new gap in cybersecurity when com where companies or developers will think that by protecting their data in the client side, uh, it's also protected on, on the backend. Um, now we're going to go through the uh, ways of integrating a web application firewall in the uh, web 2.0, uh, which is actually w where we are right now. So eBPF, it's a, it's a new uh, framework that basically uh, it's, it's arise. Uh, there, there are many security tools that arise with the, with the upcoming of the eBPF. It's basically something that you can execute at the kernel in Linux and it can be used by, by so, so many things. It's being used by, I don't know, in many Kubernetes tools and many, um, observability, uh, tooling, tracing, others. So basically what, what we think is that it can be used by, by reading HTTP and even open SSL or SSL in the end. So basically we can read encrypted traffic at the, at the host that is being executed in the eBPF. So it's a, it's a new way of, of getting uh, up to speed with, with new techniques for, for doing, uh, basically, um, reading of the web transactions. So, the the only problem we have is at that at at this moment we cannot terminate a session in the EP, in EBPF. So basically we can read a, a really high speed, but there is no way of if we see an attack right now to just block the attack or or terminate the connection. So this is an, an interesting challenge that we have, but this is a, a a good thing that that is happening now, and um, I'm glad we are we are at this moment and talking about it. Um, uh, uh, well, uh, tracing is a recent technology that's been used to transform metrics and data into a data structure that can be handled by uh, some uh, collector that will do some post-processing over it to generate statistics or uh, anything in your, uh, that's your requirement. So today we have seen that companies are, are also making use of uh, traces to uh, generate uh, WAF, um, WAF results, actually. So a, a trace with uh, all of the data of a web request uh, can, can be enriched with um, web application firewall rules. Uh, and it also doesn't support uh, blocking. We are talking about uh, an asynchron asynchronous mechanisms. Actually, this is super interesting because most modern web servers are providing uh, tracing capabilities. So basically, if you have a, a tracing server that uh, con uh, a tracing collector that has a processor that performs some WAF operations, uh, you will be able to automatically connect your WAF asynchronously to uh, your web applications. Um, we also have gRPC. So gRPC is a binary implementation that, that allows you to transmit protobuf fi uh, files or uh, binaries. So it, it is really interesting and we have seen it a, a lot in a lot of use cases that companies are using uh, sending their data from their applications or from their web servers directly to a web application firewall gRPC server and they can even uh, take disruptive decisions. This is really interesting because it can be used to approaches like uh, RASP or WAF, and uh, it can be easily integrated into applications. I mean, if you have a single WAF and you want to connect it to Node.js, Python, uh, PHP, and all kinds of languages, you can use the same proto interface to uh, connect your application firewall. Um, SPOA, it's a fun one because uh, in Corasa we we released an, an SPOA connector for HA proxy, but it was just an experiment. But somehow, so many people started using it, and it's not stable. And 
Um, well, uh, it's really cool how it works. So, uh, HPOA uh, provides a protocol of communication between uh, your server, uh, your HTTP proxy, and some application. So, from the HTTP proxy side, you will send some data, like the request body, URL, uh, headers, uh, or whatever you want to share to the web application firewall. And uh, SPOA can return um, a list, of, uh, uh, some a map of objects that you can later use to consume, uh, to take decisions. For example, you can create an, an if in, in HA proxy that says if the WAP uh, disruptive action was uh, denied, let's deny the connection. This can be used for termination or many, many things that you would like to, to use as features. And finally, WebAssembly. Uh, this is the most interesting experiment we have been uh, running in the last year. Uh, so, WebAssembly is a standard that allows you to compile a binary uh, into something that can be consumed by uh, the same virtual machine or the same processor uh, independent of the language. There is a standard called uh, proxy wasm. So uh, if you cre create a binary using the proxy wasm standard, and then you you compile it uh, on GoLang or on any language that that has a, a wasm WebAssembly compiler, you will be to be able to run it everywhere where the um, um, where it is supported. So this is super interesting because uh, we think this is the future of plugins for proxies. Right now, uh, Envoy is using it. Uh, it's, it is super important for Envoy, but we really expect for the following years to become the standard of plugins for Nginx, Apache, and all web servers. So you, you should be tuned to it. It's really interesting how it works, and we will see an, an example at the end. Um, about the the uh, challenge we're having right now. Yeah, so uh, we are having some challenges that uh, because the the web has evolved, right? We are using new techniques to send and receive data, and we are using consuming different in interfaces that we were not using years ago. So. Uh, some time uh, ago, we we created WebSockets, which is a way of sending both audio and video. It's very useful for normally audio video, but any stream that you can do because it's a bi-directional stream be between the server and the client. So it's normally being used for audio and, and, and video, but it's being used also for sending any information that you can stream. What we observe uh, is like uh, the basic information that we are sending is like 80% or more even uh, JSON streaming. So basically we are consuming APIs or consuming data and we are sending JSON along the way. And even if the data is not standard HTTP, we can, we can read the stream if it's JSON. So it's, it's challenging if we are talking about binary protocols and we are sending video encapsulated or audio encapsulated. But if we are just sending data that we can read then why not uh, protect it? Can we protect that data if it's adjacent that it's just being streamed from client to server? So that's an interesting challenge that it's happening now, and and we don't want to to look the other way. So other inter interesting point about WebSockets is that th there is a question that uh, sh should WebSockets shall WebSockets be protected by the web application firewalls? That's actually something. Uh, we're not even sure, but there's a problem there. So uh, we have reviewed all of the proxy APIs, uh, Apache, Nginx, Kadi Server, Traffic, everything, and there's no way to hook ourselves to uh, to the WebSockets. So uh, should it be an, an another layer of, of security? What should be the, the approach? Should the should the web servers themselves uh, add APIs to take? control of uh, WebSockets? This is a huge question that we're constantly uh, discussing. And GraphQL. So uh, right now, um, many APIs uh, have migrated to GraphQL. What's, what's inter interesting about GraphQL is that it returns what you want, and you can perform queries and you can perform mutations on the API. So the, the problem is that uh, it is basically a JSON, but it contains a query and data in a format that is not JSON. 
So we, we enter a problem. Uh, how do we read that data and how do we apply Uh, security policies or uh, the CRS rules against the uh, ERPC policies. Uh, sorry, the GraphQL uh, queries. Uh, actually, if you use Coras and CRS or Mod Security to test a GraphQL endpoint, uh, you will only get a JSON containing the the raw string of the GraphQL. And the, the most interesting topic that I think we should be discussing right now is edge termination. So as we have uh, seen in the implementation mechanisms, uh, there are so many right now. You can use eBPF, you can use a HA proxy, uh, but what can you sacrifice for security? I mean, uh, do you have enough, enough risk as acceptance that you can have an asynchronous WAF? Uh, how can you handle edge termination? So uh, right now, it's a, a huge paradigm. Uh, it usually depends on uh, your infrastructure and if what are your capabilities of stopping a sessions? And who are you stopping? And you're stopping a, a country uh, user IP address. Uh, are you concatenating the user agent with the IP address? Or are you going directly to the session? Or are you going uh, directly to the user? That's something that that isn't standardized now, and I'm sure most of you has had a, as, as problems. So um, if you see in the table here, uh, there you see what are the sacrifices that you should make uh, based on, on on which part of your network you're going to place your web application firewall. Uh, sometimes you will have to. Uh, I have a question about termination and really the question is probably which bit of a wasp does this question belong in that I could address it to them uh, I have the luxury maybe of not just terminating sessions I want to watch them work out what they're doing work out what the intent is and then address what that intent is if I block them they probably find another way in is is that idea of I mean rate limiting is a classic way of but it's a little crude is there anybody in a wasp that's looking at that Let's learn. Let's trap the traffic. Let's see the intention. Where, where does that belong in the OWASP board? Or does it belong in your project? Thank you. And the way you some stuff. Thanks. Uh, so there's no straightforward answer for this. Uh, but we have been analyzing this, and this is a problem that concerns us. Because uh, we are creating asynchronous connectors. And when people ask, ask us, uh, why do I want a WAF? A WAF is I, don't, I can't uh, stop the attack. Well, I think in in this year right now, uh, it's not too much of a problem. I mean, uh, you should think about the possibility of not using your WAF to block an attack. Uh, and there it comes, what's your security stack? I mean, uh, if you can uh, associate uh, your, your current connection or your current transaction to a user, uh, you can actually use your WAF to item automate processes. For example, you can generate an alarm that will go to your CIM and your CIM should, uh, there could be a hook that will access Redis and stop the session. Uh, it is, um, there are many, many options and I really think the, the WAF can be part of it, but not, not directly stopping. I mean, uh, you can create a, a Corasa plugin to actually uh, access Redis and delete a session. You can also connect to your firewall and a block an IP address. There, there are so many actions you can perform from your from your WAF, but uh, directly blocking the user might not be an alternative always. Yeah, another thing that uh, that it's really interesting is like we are we are we are getting into the async world. So of course applications have been async for some time, but for a web application firewall that we expect blocks to happen in real time in a way, and we are thinking about Maybe we can async this also because once we it, this enters our borders, there are many things that we can do. You can have I don't know um, your module, your machine learning, uh, whatever. So you send a signal to wh whatever your infrastructure is in the background, and then you take a, an access control decision, summarizing all the information they get. You can you, you can get your threat uh, information from other place. So you just fire a signal with the information that you need. And then you take a, an, a, an access control decision afterwards with all the information. We can enrich so much now that it's, it's, it makes sense to start doing this in a way. 
So that's what we are thinking is, is this summarizes a bit on what can we do right now, but we are thinking forward and this is an interesting problem and, and we have, we haven't discussed this as a community for open source projects. So. Yeah. Um, Cross-site scripting is not fun anymore. Uh, it doesn't only apply to cross-site scripting. It also applies to uh, XXC and many other attacks. Even SQL injection. Uh, today, if you want to inject uh, an SQL injection vulnerability into your web application, you probably have to hack your SQL library because it won't allow you to run raw queries. So those vulnerabilities um, uh, were the core of web application firewalls in the past uh, 10 years, but they're not any anymore. If you see the OWASP top 10, um, actually they have gone, uh, cross scripting is gone. And injection has been merged with so many attacks. So uh, we should start looking to other things. Also, horizontal sc scaling. Um, that's some, uh, that's related to um, well. So in the past, uh, WAF will scale using uh, vertical scalability, and they will just add more memory and uh, resources. But now we're talking about microservices, and uh, we're also talking about auto scaling groups. So your WAF has to go with you. So how can your WAF work with all your application that? and need to fit your user user requirements. And eventually the zero false positives. This is the, the dream, right? This is the dream for all web application firewall vendors, for the CRS, for Corasa. Uh, are we going to be flexible enough uh, to allow false positives or are we going to be str uh, so uh, strict that Oh, I wouldn't want to be so strict that we generate uh, many false positives. Um, and we basically rely on signature-based rules. So sec rules is a, a non-dynamic language. You cannot uh, adapt it during uh, execution time. And API security. So as mentioned, we, we went to the API world and it added additional variables. So right now the arguments are not only the query string and the request body. We also have the, the path, which could contain variables. Uh, I don't know if all of you are aware, but you can inject an SQL injection uh, into a URL without query parameters. So it has changed uh, the way we handle uh, attacks right now. And also with a new focus on a API security in business logic. And uh, now for a company, it might probably be worse to suffer from a broken object level authentication or a broken fun function access. And of course, uh, how we compete against the CDN WAFs. So WAF vendors right now, uh, CDN vendors, they all contain um, web application firewalls. Uh, they are comprehensive, but how do we exp uh, explain our users that they ca um, it cannot replace an, an what would be an, an enterprise WAF because uh, there's not such flexibility. They are, they are designed for minimum false positives, but maybe we need some false positive to be safe. And what we discuss uh, about blocking the user, not the IP. So if you see the, the default settings for more security, it assigns the IP and the user agent as the session uh, identifier. Uh, it, it's not okay. We cannot rely on that information. Uh, the attacker could be randomizing his user agent or simply uh, many users could be on the same network uh, with similar browsers. And Finally, after uh, 30 minutes introductions, <laughs> we go to Corasa. Um, so, <laughs> so Corasa uh, is a has a modern focus on rich application. Uh, it is uh, extremely guided by the uh, by the community and the, the enterprise, uh, but in terms of functionality, uh, we support multiple connectors. Uh, we are tested on really rough environment. I've been, I mean, there has been probably trillions of requests processed by Corasa right now. And this is our, our mascot, Sancho. 
<laughs> uh, also, we are 100% compatible with the core, core rule set, which is actually really interesting because lib, lib mode security is not that compatible with, with CRS. Yeah, right now. So, uh, <laughs> what driven this change, basically? Uh, as I said, uh, as we said before, is the most security is ending, uh, it's, it's ending its life on 2024. We don't know what's happening afterwards. But it's been driven for the past years by a company, Trustway. And it's actually been driven by them. So getting a pull request merge or getting something, a new feature or something, it's been really difficult for anyone, basically, because it depends on what the company wants. So when we started uh, talking about this project and, and what's, what's going to happen and this is, this is working well, uh, we are doing so much progress, then companies started approaching us because this is a good product, they said. So we, we look around and say, we, we, we don't want uh, to make the same mistakes. We want this product to be by the community and for the community. So in the end, we approach it always and say, Hey, let's, can we make this a new project for the foundation? Because this is what we want. We want this to be led by the community, not by a company. So there are additional companies that have been uh, joining the project by their own employees and they are committed and working on the project. And that's super, super, super interesting for us because now the community says which are the, which is the roadmap that we want to follow. And the only thing we need is implementing. <coughs> Right. And this is a massive change for the community because we have an option now that is not depending on a company. So this is why this project is super important for us as a community. Our numbers. So we're a small project. We have six active developers, but there is a lot of work going on. I mean, with six developers, we are probably releasing five PRs per day. And the project is going through a super active development. There is a lot of testing. We are actively working to enhance um, API, to enhance uh, performance and enhance uh, every aspect of the web application firewall, uh, even new features. Uh, there have been six, uh, we have uh, 890 stars, 695 comments. Uh, well, the numbers uh, are right there. Um, Okay, so this will become a bit boring now. <laughs> Let's go to the internals. So, uh, as Felipe mentioned, by Apache, we inherited um, we inherited the five uh, Apache phases, which are uh, process headers, request headers, process request body, process response headers, process response body, and process logging. So it actually does make sense because most most of the connectors and proxy APIs that are available in the market, they will provide you a, a wrapper to access the URL, the method, and the request headers at the same time. Uh, then you will get the, uh, the request, bo uh, request body. Uh, then you will get the response string with the response uh, headers, and eventually you will get... Uh, the response body. So uh, the faces are marked here as uh, how disruptive are them. So basically, uh, greens are where you could um, you won't be able to stop the attack, and the blue ones are where you stop. The, um, and about the design, the Corasa, Corasa uh, internally is designed uh, for um, uh, it's modular. Uh, for a plugins architecture, and it's also immutable, which allows us to ex export only a minimum of API. So um, it's actually relatively easy to implement. I'll show you. So uh, can I? Yeah. Uh, can you read it right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, also, I, I know it's funnier to just get your web application firewall compiled like your mod security with Apache. But um, actually writing your own application firewall uh, implementation using Corasa, because Corasa itself isn't a web application firewall. It's uh, the framework you will use to create a web application firewall. Actually, uh, uh, with the core rule set, there it, it becomes a web application firewall. Um, 
So uh, you, you will create just an instance of WAF using the configuration API, and then you will list, uh, use a list of directives. There is no need to use a list of directives. Uh, Corasa supports uh, automatically creating uh, every config and rule programmatically, so uh, it can actually be done for there. Uh, so, and what you see here is all the lines you need to create a WAF transaction. I mean, uh, this is a WAF. If you have a web application in Golang, these are the lines that you have to implement to have a WAF. Um, so we will create a transaction, and this is super important. We, you have to always close your transaction with a process logging and close. Corasa uses so many um, Golang optimizations that it actually has to clean the memory after running the transaction. Uh, then you will start processing each one of the phase that we saw on the map, like process connection, uh, process request headers, and you will be you will be getting obtaining uh, interruption objects that will actually uh, t uh, interruption objects are uh, objects that can be consumed by a web server or proxy, and it will tell it how to behave. Uh, the server itself have, have to decide whether it will uh, use it uh, properly or not. For example, it will say, uh, hey, do some redirection. Hey, deny. And the server ha uh, has to uh, receive the action and say, hey, okay, I will do that. Yeah, one of, one of the things that we have as a library also is like you can write your own WAF, but also you can write tests for it. So that's super cool because uh, all you can reuse all the Golang tooling for writing your, your tests, and it's it's going to be extremely performant and and really well tested. So that's another another coolness that comes with the chosen language. Um, okay. So regarding the benchmarks, um, it looks a bit un unreal, but that's because we are talking about lib mod security. So if you um, use Cgo, which is the C implement C wrapper for Go in Golang, uh, the performance you get out of Corasa is 40 times better, uh, faster than mod security. Corasa is super optimized. It runs uh, less operations than mod security in all aspects. Uh, I mean, for example, mod security will run for each uh, match all of the actions that you have on the rule. Corasa um, uh, during bootstrap performs some, some intelligent selection of which uh, actions are relevant and it only stores the actions uh, at the place where it should be run. So it won't repeat actions when they're, where they're not needed. And also it uses the read2 engine instead of uh, PCRE, which is actually a huge bottleneck for web application firewalls and also a source of uh, denial of service. Yeah, so I, I want to remark that because uh, we work together with the with Coraza. So the core rule set uh, basically uh, started working on getting rid of uh, regular expressions that were only PCRE because we know PCRE it's basically uh, problematic because you can have regular expression denial of service and and it's not linear on the on the size of the input, right? And that's the main problem. So basically changing that for other uh, engines like R2 or Hyperscan or whatever, th then, then you have a different uh, timing when you, that only depends on the input, on the size of the input. So, and we, we, we are guaranteeing linear uh, processing on that and only on that. So that's, that's a cool feature, but that comes with uh, the, all the work that CRS did to basically move away from regular expressions that were uh, basically preventing other engines to, to do their work. So that was a, a really nice uh, feature that CRS got into the next version, the next major version, which is not out there, but it's going to be soon. Uh, so the deployment options. Um, Corasa officially supports uh, WebAssembly and Caddy. We also have a connector for HA proxy, but it's experimental, so please don't use it. <laughs> we get so many issues, and we're, it's really, I don't know how it works. <laughs> so, um, as I said before, uh, we're look, really looking forward for WebAssembly because it's actually easier to export uh, a single binary of Corasa uh, for all web servers or proxies rather than having connectors for, for each one of them. So right now, using WebAssembly, 
you can rank her as a uh, on Envoy a stable. And Nginx, there is a way to rank uh, with Proxy Wasm. Uh, it's experimental and it will uh, eventually come somewhere, but uh, it can be done. Uh, Kong also through Lua supports WebAssembly. Uh, also, it has a golden connector that we're testing. And there's no use at all, but you can run Coraz in your browser. <laughs> you can have an HTML WAF. <laughs> uh, we support Kadi Web Server. I, I don't know if any of you is familiar with Kadi Web Server. Uh, it's really fun because uh, everyone is always aiming to Apache and Nginx, but Apache uh, Kadi is a really interesting project. I have run benchmarks and I have t uh, tested it a lot. Uh, it is faster than Nginx uh, in a lot of uh, use cases, and it's really easy to to integrate. Also, it supports Auto TLS. It will automatically get a certificate for a public entity and assign it to your website, so you can deploy applications really fast. Uh, also, you can use it on, on Kubernetes. Uh, there's an ingress controller module, uh, and HA proxy. Well, fun thing about HA proxy. Also, um, an HA proxy ingress controller that is being developed uh, somehow took Corasa into their core. So, the, well, uh, using our SPOH connector. So, technically, you can use Corasa with the HA proxy ingress connector. Uh, and in-app, uh, Corasa also has an internal middleware that you can in uh, implement into your Golang application. So basically, if you are running uh, um, any HTTP uh, service on your Golang app, with one line, you can add uh, Corasa to perform all of the phases that are required. And the most important thing, feature of Corasa is extensibility. So we, supporting WebAssembly and many, many other things uh, is uh, required us to have a, a modular structure, uh, and it forced us to uh, it guided us into a uh, uh, plugin architecture that allows you to extend all of the capabilities of Corasa. I mean, if, if you want a, a new detection type using an operator in five lines, you can have a new operator. Uh, you can also have new actions, like for example, uh, going to Redis and delete a session. Uh, you can have new body processors. You can extend it to add GraphQL, or if you have some custom con uh, type. A few days ago, we were discussing with Felipe uh, some companies that sells frameworks that uses custom data structures to actually uh, generate the requests. So with Corasa, you can actually protect them. Um, logging, for example, you could send your log to Elastic or some syslog if you want. Uh, audit logging, uh, the same, and, and the directives. Yeah, so one, one of the things that we did here is basically uh, explore a lot of interfaces. So it's very easy to, to just match the interface and do your own. And the, the sky is the limit basically there. So you just need to implement whatever you need. It's very useful for your needs. So it's, it's, it's very convenient for doing uh, whatever you're uh, thinking about now in the future. And roadmap. <laughs> <laughs> There's no roadmap. <laughs> the, the idea of Corasa is that features come from users. Or if a user has a requirement, uh, it fits what's the project. It doesn't affect how it works. It doesn't affect performance. It doesn't uh, limit how we, uh, which connectors can we use. Basically, we 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 added. We are a community project. Uh, we are not guided by some major interests. We literally will add. If, if any of you create a PR and it is useful and you go to the meeting and say, hey, I really think this feature is cool and everyone is, hey, I really like it. It's going to be merged. Yeah, and, and I cannot stress that enough. Uh, it's, it's guided by the community. And and we have roadmap. We, we are planning on doing things, of course, in the future. But it's depending a lot on th some of the things we talk now. We are thinking about, I don't know, GraphQL uh, and other things that we are seeing a lot uh, is basically... Uh, content types inside other content types, like sending JSON or sending HTML with JSON in, inside. So you cannot use the same parser for because you're reading HTML, but then you're finding a lot of JSON inside. And, and that's driving us crazy because you cannot write specific rules for that in the case of the language. But if we have support from the, from the web firewall, then, then there is a, a new thing that we can try. So it's basically uh, a blanket for doing anything we want. And finally, 
<laughs> uh, so, in conclusion to what we have learned from our project, um, we can live next, uh, next to uh, next generation firewalls. I mean, uh, I haven't explained the concept, but uh, people talk about next generation firewalls, which will add machine learning and everything. Uh, but what we have seen as results from the integration of CRS and Corasa, um, a signature-based web can still be part of it. Also, I do believe that there should be a machine learning, open source machine learning for WAFs. It could be by the CRS side or by the Corasa side, but it is definitely something we constantly discuss. Um, we must evolve to embrace API security and the new internet. I mean, uh, it's not possible that we haven't considered in the, uh, in the current web application firewalls the possibility that there's a variable inside the path of a, of a URL. Um, we also have to think about the edge termination. I mean, edge termination is a, a core decision when you are implementing a WAF and how you implement it will affect uh, what's your performance. If you, if you have zero tolerance, of lat latency, then you can't use an inline firewall. There, there's no way. Uh, and enterprise communication is essential. I mean, uh, we need the companies to be part of this. The, the great problem of mod security, I think, is that um, companies don't want to participate in the project because they're basically <laughs> helping the competition. So there is no uh, that's not not sane for a, for a, an open source project in the case of Corasa uh, we embrace enterprise we talk with all of them and they all uh, reach us all of our, most of our users uh, often reaches us and here are the links in case you want to check any of this I, I will close this uh, because I will show you a, a playground I will show you how to run a, a web application firewall in HTML5 <laughs> <laughs> so if, if companies are not willing to That because it's basically uh, run by a company. The decisions right now are made by the company. The company decided that this is an online. So there is an, a, another story. When this decision came out, we basically started uh, reaching the company. We talked with Andrew van der Sock. We started talking with Harold and tried to get uh, the, the project uh, landing in OWASP. But there was uh, no conclusion from the company and they are going to wait until things end and we we as a community cannot cannot wait we need we need a solution so uh, at least in our opinion is we, we need something now we need we, we we cannot say that we need guarantees in this but we don't know what's happening and maybe someone some com some other company is going to take it maybe it lands in the OWAS foundation in the future or another foundation in the future but we don't know I don't know. We and are, we are, they are already doing. They are already doing. Yeah. 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 There, there are many co companies involved in Corasa. Yeah. They are. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, maybe it's sexy. I don't know. But uh, or or it or it's working for their requirements, and that's it. Yeah. We 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 can guarantee that there is there is a lot of. Uh, I mean, time is uh, is short, right? But uh, there is a lot of other things that we are we know that it's useful for, and the change of language also is useful for. One of the things that it's been a long a long time a problem for in most security is uh, languages other than English, for example, and things like that. And there is no support, and it's there is no uh, timeline for that, and it's I, I might think it's never going to be. But Golang with Golang, you have that straight off the box. So that's another thing that, and we know it's been used a lot in China and others. We have a lot of users in China, and if yeah. you if if you're a cloud vendor uh, and you want to add a WAF uh, product to your company, uh, the starting point is Corasa. Because uh, there is an, an active development, and if you want something new, you won't have to get customer support. You will just uh, create your PR, and it, it will probably get merged. Uh, we will go through, through questions, but first, I will want I want to show you. Oh, you broke it! No, no, I'm joking. Oh, really? <laughs> you block yourself out. Oh, what happened? Oh, there you go. 
let me see if I can. Ah, you never can. Live demos, live demo gods. Praise. Uh, it will work. This is a. Let's pray to the. To the demo gods. Yeah, the demo god worked. So this is Corasta in the browser. Literally, this is just an HTML application. There is no server. This is a GitHub page. So basically, you will type here. Sorry about the colors. I think it's hacker colors. Maybe. There it is. There's a Corasta transaction. These are the rules match. And these are the internal collections that for debugging. So in theory, you could add here host. So we, you, what you're matching here is basically the the core rule set. So we are loading the core rule set. We are using the core rule set for for matching, and that's what you're seeing there. If you see here, we are matching SQL injection rules. In in an HTML application. And you can even, uh, for example, here, where's the, the add character? Huh. Hmm. Oh, there yes, is. there you go. Uh, yeah, what's the word? Oh, conditional match. Uh, in the one message uh, test. Okay, so if you see now, you basically extended the engine with a new test, with a new uh, web rule. And you can even extend it to responses. This is a really great tool to debug your, your WAF. I mean, uh, you can pass your request and response here and see how Corasa behaves. Or you will disable CRS and just run your, your own rules. So this URL is public. You can just go to playground.corasa.io and see how literally, uh, this, uh, please don't enter through your phone. It's not responsive. <laughs> we are uh, backend developers. <laughs> 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 yeah, so, and this is it. Um, questions? Yeah, can you, can you go back to the to the links? Oh, yeah. So they, they have it. And yeah, we are taking questions. Are, are we good in timing? We have five minutes. Five minutes. Oh, uh, questions, uh, five minutes. But we are going to be outside and you can reach us. Think of the stickers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for the presentation. I mean, uh, uh, and I can see there is a lot of work on Coraz, etc. I, I wanted just to um, go back to what you said about cross-site scripting, SQL injection, etc. And I tend to disagree in that respect. I mean, it's true that uh, it's not the first one now, but it's still the third. And there are still many CVEs coming out that are about cross-site scripting, SQL injections, etc., etc. So if the WAF is not about stopping those kind of uh, threats, then uh, uh, I'm a bit confused, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the WAF must protect you against the SQL injection and cross scripting. It cannot do that. It's just that the attack is not so common as it used to be. I mean, it's a core feature of Corasa. But it's also a problem. Uh, right now, we rely on live injection. Actually, why Corasa works, it's because we managed to port uh, the C project live injection a few years ago. Um, so, uh, Handling SQL injection as cross site scripting is really hard because um, we cannot tokenize all the use cases of SQL. I mean, there's Oracle, there's Microsoft, the, there is MySQL, MariaDB, and they all take similar syntax, but they have their own tricks. So it's impossible to take them all. There are machine learning approaches uh, that doesn't work that well. So, but it, it's really hard. And the same for HTML. HTML is also now is evolving now, and it's really hard. I think if you know so, uh, your SQL dialects, you could make modules that are for that. That's an, that, so what we what we want to add is like no, you're right. They are important. We are targeting them. But that's what you get with your classic WAFs already. So the important th that that's the importance of the rules. You're using the rule set on on that, and and that's basically it. 
we are thinking about what's next, basically, and what's what's going to hurt afterwards. So that's what we're trying to design for. But you are completely right. They are important. They are not as important as they used to be. I think that we 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 wanted to stress that, and we 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 are thinking about what's next. That's the only thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we're yeah. Ninety seconds. Very, very quick question. Yeah. Can you do transformations on those? Like if you get yes. 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 Yeah. Actually, there are like uh, 70 transformations. Uh, you can do some decoding. You can do encoding, uh, ASCII, Unicode. There, there are all kinds of transformations. Yeah. And the sky is the limit, basically. Yeah. Whatever you can program. Uh, thanks a lot for coming. Yeah. Um, we are going to be around if you have more questions. We are friendly. We are in, uh, <laughs> I guess, and we, <laughs> we are in the, you can find us in the Corasa channel in Slack, uh, in the old Slack. Uh, we'll be around. We have meetings, uh, um, remote meetings, but yeah, you're, well, you're all welcome to participate in the community. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone.